Earlier today, Blizzard gave a clarification for Demolish, the cooldown granted to arms and protection warriors by the Colossus hero spec tree in the War Within, and really the defining ability of that entire subspec. Hi, it's Lerald, and I'm going to go over this update and give some thoughts on the Colossus hero spec tree now that some of the uncertainties about it have been removed. Let's just start with the post from Kyvax here. We've noticed a few common questions about Colossus, and we'd like to clarify some points. First on the flavor, Colossus warriors are big and mighty, but they are also veterans of countless battles and have the expertise to use that brawn most effectively. They are the fearsome combination of raw physical ability and master of warfare that no one wants to face on the battlefield. Mechanically, Colossus will aim to deliver some of the biggest melee hits around, and sometimes those big hits come from knowing precisely when and where to hit their target for maximum effectiveness. This is a lot of flowery language about bonking dudes with sticks, and it Makes a lot of sense, I think, for Arms Warrior, but for Prot Warrior, this doesn't really line up at all for me. Now, maybe the tuning will be sufficient on Prot Warrior where that makes sense, and this is actually like an insane amount of single target burst damage, in which case I'd be thrilled, but that's... I like, I like to play big bonk style builds in games like Dark Souls and Elden Ring, so that appeals to me. It just doesn't really seem all that much like Prot Warrior. Regarding Demolish, Demolish is a two second channel. This is kind of what we feared. And the warrior is unable to move or use other abilities while channeling, similar to I-Beam or Fists of Fury. Okay, so I did pull up I-Beam, that is a two second channel, and you're kind of unable to move during it, and I imagine it'll be the same level of movement where you can move at like 1% move speed while you're channeling Demolish. But Fists of Fury, it's a four second channel, so maybe that's what they're comparing it to, but you can absolutely move during Fists of Fury, so I don't really love that comparison as much. Just like those abilities, a Colossus player will have to think tactically about when and where is optimal to use it. This is an intentional part of the flavor of the ability. Every hit of Demolish will hit hard, so you'll want to use it as soon as you can. These two sentiments, the using it as quickly as you can, but also it being an in intentionally difficult to use skill that you have to time out, are kind of in conflict with each other, but maybe that's sort of the gameplay aspect of it. You have to think about it be a little bit tactical, then you get rewarded with a massive burst of damage. I think that's all right. The you are grounded terminology in Unstoppable Force was intended to reflect granting an immunity to stuns and knockbacks. The tooltip has been updated with more clear language. They got to that update really quickly because the original tooltip that I remember is while channeling Demolish, you are grounded, making you immune to stuns and effects that move you, which that seems uh, pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward. So I think they did a good job making that clear there. I do like the idea of grounded as a sort of CC immune terminology and this as a kind of uh, utility that they could expand to other classes, other specs, you know, DK is pretty close to being grounded due to disadvantage and Icebound Fortitude. So having like more mechanics like that would be cool. I would like to see other classes be grounded. The visuals for Demolish are still being iterated on, but to give an idea of where we are where we're going for currently. The channel starts with a quick two strike combo leading into a big wind up into a massive overhead slam that cracks the ground in the affected area. So uh, chop chop slam. OK, the two initial strikes should make you feel like you're ramping yourself up and putting the target off balance so you can land the massive final hit. We're explicitly trying to avoid feeling like rampage or the flurry attack from fear laugh. I guess it's good to have its own unique feel its own unique look. I'm excited to see a unique look, but I mean, I gotta say, I'll, I'll even pipe them in right now. I like the look of Rampage. I've always thought it looks really great. And I love the flurry attack from Feralath. It's badass. So I don't really have a problem with just bringing one of those forward. But if they've got something even new and newer and cooler, I'm OK with that, too. Blizzard's artists always do a good job, so I have faith in them on that front. Now, here's the real doozy. The Warrior Class Tree will receive a significant rearrangement in the War Within, and we are pleased to confirm that it is possible and easy to take Stormbolt and Shockwave at once. We'd also like to add that we are positioning Shockwave primarily as a utility ability, so the bonus damage passive talent will be removed. Will be be removed. For those warriors interested in more interactions with Execute, keep your eye out for Slayer, Winky Face, thanks to all for the feedback. And I'm gonna like that. I am excited for Slayer. This is probably the issue I have that's the like the biggest criticism I have of the hero spec tree is I damn sure want to play Slayer as a protection warrior. It's annoying that I'm not getting access to it. I like the Mountain Thane concept, but the problem with it is that like the proc rates on things could be really high. It could be really bad. It's kind of unclear. The Colossus has this 
somewhat unwieldy ability where you're locked in place to use a allegedly massive cooldown. That sounds pretty cool, but I want to execute like like crazy. Can't do that as pride. Unfortunate. I think there's still a big lingering problem with this ability, with this talent tree just in general. Arms and Protection Warrior both want to use a lot of rage. Prot wants to do it primarily for the purposes of fueling anger management. Arms wants to do it for tactician resets, but in both cases you either want to be generating a bunch of rage with every global cooldown, or you want to be spending a bunch of rage with every global cooldown. Demolish, from the look of it, does neither. Now I don't really think this is like a hard fix, and I even think if they really wanted to get clever with it, I think they could kind of make this into an ability that does different things for different specs. It could be an amazing rage generator for protection, kind of like shield charges right now, and they could make it into a massive rage spender for arms. I think the possibility of doing that sort of very different functionality for two different specs that have access to the quote unquote same ability is totally an option here. I think it's something they could explore. But as it is, it's just a button that you press that does a bunch of damage. It might as well be a racial ability or a trinket. That's not great, especially when it then comes with the downside of being locked in place and forced to use one of the worst abilities in the game, basically, Fists of Fury. Not a fun ability to use, even though it can deal a lot of damage. The functionality of it is annoying, and they've chosen to replicate that with this talent tree that's supposed to be very exciting. I think it could be really good for Prot. I like most of the other talents in the tree. I like a lot of the functionality that's built into this tree. I want this to work. I do see a lot of arms warriors going, all right, well, Slayer's coming. I can't wait for that. And uh, <laughs> I kind of feel similarly. There was one other note in here that I really wanted to lock in on. The warrior class tree will receive a significant rearrangement in the War Within. That was dropped in there just sort of like, this is a thing that's happening, right? I think there's subtext to be mined here. I think what they are saying here is, and I could be wrong, but the, the warrior class tree will receive a significant rearrangement in the War Within, unlike many other class trees. I think there is an expectation that many of the other class trees, especially the class trees for classes that are working very well right now, so Demon Hunter, are probably just gonna go untouched heading into the War Within, and the majority of the changes are going to be through their hero talent trees. That is a concern. One of the main criticisms of the class design and the handling of talent trees in this expansion, which I do think have been a success, has been that the classes that have been the strongest throughout this expansion have been the ones who were most recently redesigned. I think Vengeance Demon Hunter, you can't do a better, you can't find a better example than Vengeance Demon Hunter. It's the strongest tank that may have ever existed, at least in the post Mists of Pandaria era, and it's also the tank that was redesigned most recently. Coincidence? Of course not. So, with them saying that they're redesigning the warrior class tree, I think that's good for warriors. As somebody who loves playing warrior and loves when they're good, I think that that's great news. But it does kind of make me think, okay, so classes that aren't explicitly getting a tree redesign might be left to wither on the vine a bit. Now, hopefully I'm blowing something out of proportion or just reading into this more than they're trying to actually put out there. I'd be okay with that. And the news that Stormbolt and Shockwave are gonna be available easily at once without having to sacrifice like end tree talents to get them. That all sounds pretty great. So all things told, I am very excited for Warrior. I do think this is a good news. It's certainly better than the worst case scenario could have been. I also would love to know, is this two second channel demolish? Is that reduced by haste? They didn't give us any clarity on that. So I guess we'll find out on that as well. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.